Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on how to create speed lines for your animations in Flash. Let's just take a quick look at an example. Here we've got a little looping animation that I made in Flash with three different keyframes of speed lines just looping over and over again. You can put something in the background or on top of it to make it look like it's moving very quickly. So let's take a look at how you can create speed lines in Illustrator first, and then we're going to take a look at how you can create them in Manga Studio 4. So let's take a look at some examples. So here we go, we're in Illustrator. And I've drawn a series of parallel lines using the line tool, which is over here. And I've tried to space them out a little bit, leaving varying widths in between them. But they're all uniform lines at the moment. They're all about two points. If I want to make them look a bit more like speed lines, so as if they've been created with a brush, so they've got tapered ends, a bit like the kind of speed lines you see in comics and in animation. What we can do is we can just select the lot and we can change the width profile from uniform to one of the presets here. So you can see we've now got these really nice tapered lines that look more interesting and a bit more natural. So that's how you create kind of vertical or horizontal straight speed lines. If we move down, I've drawn some curved lines using the pen tool. So if I click once with the pen tool and then hold down the left mouse button, I can drag out a curve. And if I want these to look like speed lines, you can see in the example I've got here, I've applied that variable width stroke to them as well. So I'll show you how to do that. Just select them, and then I'm going to choose this width profile one, which has that nice tapered edge to it. And the good thing about creating these in Illustrator is you can just copy them using Command or Control C and jump into Flash and you can just paste those in. You'll get a little dialog box like this. Make sure it doesn't say paste as bitmap. Click OK. And here we've got vector versions of our lines. They've been converted from strokes to fills. So I can now double click into those and mess around with them do as I please. I can change their colour if I want, like so. Really easy. Let's take a look at a few more examples of speed lines in Illustrator. You can see here I've got a number of tapered lines moving towards this ball and I've got some curved tapered lines showing where the ball has been. So these are the kind of speed lines you'd see in a static comic format. But if you want to know how to animate them, check out my smears and multiples tutorial. So this is a kind of speed line mixed with a smear. Here we've got an example of multiple versions of a ball. As it goes from the beginning to the end, it starts off quite thin and then it goes to its full thickness. The stroke width is getting smaller to show that this is further back in time and as the stroke gets thicker, this is further forwards in time. Here we've got an example of a very basic speed line. It doesn't have a variable width stroke on it, and it's just got the ball at the end. These are examples that I've adapted from a really great book called Making Comics by a guy called Scott McLeod, which I highly recommend you check out if you like doing this type of comic book art and also animation. And here we've got another example with tapered lines. You can see these two tapered lines taper both in their width but also in their proximity to each other at the beginning of the animation and they gradually get wider at the end and taper off in width. And we've got some curved tapered lines and we've got some horizontal curved tapered lines. And we've got this extra one going through here. So you can see this is kind of like a smear and a series of multiples as well showing that progression. So that's how to do speed lines in Illustrator. Let's take a look at how to do automated speed lines 
in Manga Studio. So you can see I've got Manga Studio 4 here. Manga Studio 5 has come out at the date of me doing this tutorial, but it doesn't have speed lines as a filter anymore. It's a feature that they've removed. So you can only do this in Manga Studio 4. Don't worry if you don't have Manga Studio. This is something that you can recreate in Illustrator. It's just a bit more work. So let's jump into Manga Studio. I'm going to create a new page. And I'm going to make its pixel size 1920 by 1080. That's the size of a widescreen high definition flash animation. I'm going to click OK. And I'll get this white space like so. I'm going to go up to Filter and click Speed Lines. It's nice and simple. And you can see that we get these options here, these properties, and we get control over where the center of our speed lines is going to be. It'll probably default to center, but you can choose whether you want it to start at the top or the bottom. Let's leave it on center for the moment. And there's lots of different options that you can control. You can control how many lines you have. So the further you push it up, the more lines there are. At the moment it doesn't really look very different because the distance in between the lines is quite big. So now I've shoved that distance down to zero, you can see all the lines are really close together. So this could actually be a really useful effect if you're wanting really dense speed lines like this. I'm going to leave mine on 1.9. The curvature you can control, so how curvy you want your speed lines to be. This can be very useful also if you're wanting to create speed lines that move along with an object. Perhaps you're wanting them to appear behind a car or something that's turning around a corner. I'm going to leave that on zero, I think. The angle of the lines, that's pretty self-explanatory. Do you want them to be diagonal, horizontal, diagonal in the opposite direction? So there we go. I'm going to leave mine on 90. The width of the lines, I had it on 0.4, but I've just pushed it up to 3.7. And you can see they're much thicker now. So I'm going to stick that back down to 0.4. There we go. And the length, you can shorten it so that they're just little stubs, or you can push it out and make it much longer. I'm going to leave mine on 51, I think. And I think I'll have 71 lines. There we go. Uh, displacement, the further you shove that up, the more out of sync the lines will be. So if you have it on zero, they're all along this nice vertical axis. But the further you push it up, the more vertically out of sync they'll get. But you can see the effect that I'm talking about as I push the slider up. So there you get a very different effect. So I'm going to leave that on 33, I think. And you've got lots of randomization options. The randomization goes from 0 to 4. I've shoved it up quite high for my length and my width. If I turn it off for width, you can see they're all a uniform size. When I turn it back on, there's a nice variation. And the same with the length. They're all the same length, pretty much, unless I turn it on and then they're randomized a little bit more. Down here, we've got the stroke in, stroke out options. If I turn them both off, you can see that there's no tapering on that stroke anymore. Just like the strokes we drew in Illustrator before we applied the width profile. So I generally have in point and out point turned on. You can choose what color you want your drawing to be. I'm gonna make sure it's black. I'm going to stick it on end point because I want all of my speed lines to be down here at the bottom. And then I'm ready to click OK. So now that I've done that on this layer here, I've got my speed lines. I think I'm going to call that layer lines one. And then I'm going to hide it and create a new layer and call that lines two. So we want it to be a raster layer. That's all fine. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go back up to filter, choose speed lines. I'm going to hit this regenerate button until I get the image that I want. 
what that does is it just redraws your speed lines and randomizes them a little bit. So I'm going to click OK. So now I've got this image and this image. If I turn them both on at the same time, you can see that they're nice and varied. So I'm going to turn those both off. I'm going to make one more, call it lines 03. Click OK. Go to filter, click on speed lines, regenerate, click OK. And there we go. We've got a third set of speed lines. So each one of these layers we're going to use as a keyframe in Flash. But before we do that, we need to export this as a Photoshop file. Because these drawings aren't vectors, we'll need to save them out in Photoshop first before we can convert them for use in Flash. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Image File. I'm going to output to the actual size, which is 1920 by 1080. I want to output the entire page. I want to output in grayscale. And I just want the finished image. I don't need any of the sketches or any of the page info. I'm going to call it Speedlines Example. And I'm going to save it inside my Speed and Focus Lines folder. And like so, I'm just going to click Open and OK. And it's rendering out the file there. It's finished now. So let's find the file on my hard drive. Here it is, Speeds Lines Example. So I'm going to open that up in Photoshop. And you can see that we've got these three layers of our lines. It's kept the names, which is useful. I'm going to delete this empty layer here that's just called Layer. And the base, I'm going to delete that as well. And then I'm just going to save that. And I'm going to open it up in Illustrator. So I'm going to right click on it, go open up with Illustrator. We want to convert layers to objects so that we can decipher between them. I'm going to click OK. And now we've got these three layers in Illustrator, which is very useful. You can see there we've got all our different layers. So let's start off with layer one. We're going to trace this. So I'm going to go to Image Trace. I'm just going to click on that, like so. And then I'm going to expand it. So we've traced it using the default presets. And I'm going to expand it so it's now editable. So that's layer one. Let's turn that off and jump it to layer two. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click Image Trace. And then I'm going to click Expand. So there we've got another nice trace of our lines. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Certainly good enough for our purposes. And I'm going to turn that layer off. Let's check out our final layer. I'm going to click on it. Go to Image Trace. And click Expand. You might be wondering why I'm doing this tracing in Illustrator and not in Flash. And that's because the tracing facilities in Illustrator are quite a bit better than they are in Flash. You've got a little bit more control and it's quite a lot more powerful. So now that I've done that, I can save this out as an Illustrator file by going to File, Save As. And I can change the name from PSD to AI. I'm going to save that. Click OK. And then we're ready to jump into Flash. Here we go, I've got a 1080p document open here. I'm going to go to File, Import, Import to Stage. And we can find our Illustrator file there. Click Open. Now we've only got one artboard, so that's fine. I'm going to ask it to convert layers to keyframes. So those three layers that we've created will get converted into three keyframes that we can use to create a looping animation. I'm going to click OK. And you can see here we've got, if I use the full stop and comma keys, I can move through our animation like so. You can see that it's all there. It's a little bit small at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click down here to edit multiple frames. And I'm going to Command A to select all and just size up my speed lines like that. 
So I'm holding down Shift and Alt. Shift is to constrain the proportions and Alt is to make it scale up from the corner. So there we go. I'm going to move it down like so. There we go. So I can now turn edit to multiple frames off. We've now got those three keyframes in place. So let's turn looping on and just play this through. So it's going really, really fast at the moment. I think we want to slow it down a little bit. You can see that we've got these three keyframes here. Let's use F5 on each one of these keyframes to make them last for one frame longer. So I'm going to press F5 on my first one, F5 on my second, F5 on my third. And then if we loop it now, you can see it's a little bit slower. And there you go. That's how to create a looping speed line animation using Illustrator or Manga Studio. Have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.